everyone! Hi! It is a very wet one here today. <laughs> so we're going to sing hello to everyone, to Mr Owl, to Miss Wall, and this time the river is so full, it's going really fast. We thought we'd sing hello to the river today as well. Excellent. Okay then. Are we ready? Hello everyone, how are you? Hello everyone, how are you? Hello everyone, how are you? How are you today? Hello Mr. Owl, how are you? Hello Mr. Owl, how are you? Hello Mr. Owl, how are you? How are you today? Hello, Mr. Mole, how are you? Hello, Mr. Mole, how are you? Hello, Mr. Mole, how are you? How are you today? Hello, River, how are you? Hello, River, how are you? Hello, River, how are you? How are you today? So this week's activity is all about garden birds because from the 29th to the 31st of January is the big garden bird watch and we'd love it if you got into your garden or stood at your window and had a look to see what you could find. You'll have to see whether you can find many in your gardens and see if they might be the same ones that we get in the woods or are they different. So we look forward to hearing what you find yeah. and how many of each one you get and We'll have a go at making some bird feeders so you can tell us if anything is attracted to the food that you put out as well. Have fun! So this book is called Robin's Winter Song. It was a beautiful autumn day. Robin sang from his bench as it swayed in the breeze. He saw the leaves swirling in the wind, twisting and turning, raising and falling. Something was different, but what was it? The squirrels were scurrying, the mice were scampering, and high up in the branches the finches were fluttering. Are you going somewhere? Robin asked the finches. We're getting ready to fly south, they chirped. Winter is coming. Who's winter? asked Robin. And why don't you want to meet him? But the friends didn't hear him, and in a flurry, they were gone. Down on the ground, Squirrel was busy digging. What are you doing? Robin asked. I'm burying these nuts before winter comes, said Squirrel. The winter sounds very greedy, thought Robin, and he flew off to the big oak tree. don't like the sound of winter at all, Robin told Owl. Do you think I should fly south like the finches? Oh no, said Owl. That's far too far for you. You must stay here, but be sure to keep warm and snug or, be, or you'll be cold when winter comes. Winter is scary, greedy and cold. Robin was frightened. He looked on sadly as the rest of his friends flew south, far, far away from winter. How he wished he could go with them. I do hope they'll come back soon, he sighed. Later in the woods, Robin spotted Bear. He glided down, happy to meet his friend. Where are you going, he asked. I'm off to find a cosy cave to sleep in until winter's gone, said Bear. Even Bear was hiding. Robin remembered what Owl had told him. He needed to find somewhere warm and snug, somewhere far away from winter. Can I come with you? He asked Bear. Robin and Bear settled comfortably into Bear's cave. How many sleeps till winter goes away? asked Robin. Oh, just one, said Bear. Oh, that's not bad, thought Robin. So he snuggled up close to Bear and squeezed his eyes shut. Before long, he heard Bear's snores, soft and gentle, and soon Robin fell asleep too.
When Robin stirred, he felt a chill in the air. It was very cold. Perhaps winter's here, he thought. Robin flew to the opening of the cave and as he peered out, he gasped. The whole of the wood had turned white. Everything sparkled and shimmered and white flakes were falling from the sky. Oh, how beautiful, he thought. How, sorry, how beautiful, thought Robin, as he tiptoed out in the fresh, crunchy white. You see, Mouse has left his little footsteps there. I found some footprints in our snow in the meadow. I wonder who they could belong to. Hmm. As Robin hopped and slipped happily through the woods, he came across all sorts of animals. Why is everything so white? he asked Mouse. It's snow, of course, squeaked Mouse. Look around you, Robin. It's winter. This is winter, gasped Robin. He couldn't believe it. Winter wasn't scary at all. In fact, it was wonderful. The forest was transformed and Robin loved exploring with his new friends. He chased Owl with snowflakes. He helped Squirrel find his acorns. And at night, everybody snuggled together and kept warm. Robin was having such a wonderful wintry fun that time passed quickly and one day he noticed shoots sprouting out of the ground. Hmm, something was different, but what was it? Then he realised, the snow is melting, he said. And that means it's time to wake there, said Squirrel. Bear yawned, Ooh, stretched and rubbed his eyes. Winter's almost gone, he said happily. But I love winter, said Robin sadly. Why does it have to go? Because spring is coming, smiled Bear. Robin didn't know what spring was, but this time he was sure he wanted to find out. I can't wait to meet spring, he sang joyfully. There you go, that was Robin's winter song. I wonder if you'll spot a robin with his nice red chest while you're doing the big bird count. Hi, so as you can see we've moved inside for this activity. As I mentioned earlier, it is the big garden bird watch coming up. I don't know how well you can see that. But this is from the RSPB and what they'd like you to do is have a look and see which birds come into your garden um, and that will and count them. And that'll give them an idea of which birds are doing really, really well and which ones we need to look after a little bit more. So there's lots of different birds on here. There's the chaffinch and the coal tit, collared dove and a goldfinch, sparrow. Um, and you can download this sheet. So I will try and put a link to, um, to that on the um, message that I send through. Um, some of the easiest ones to recognise are probably the blackbird. He's, the male one is all black and quite rounded. He's quite a big bird and he has a lovely bright yellow beak. And the female blackbird is actually brown and speckled, but quite a dark brown. Um, but the, the male blackbird, that's a nice, easy one. A blue tit, I always think is really easy to remember because he looks like he's wearing a little blue cap on the top of his head. So that's another one to look, another good one to look out for. And he quite often comes down to feeders and things like that. Um, and the, quite often will be a few of them about if they come down. And the other one that I think you'd probably find quite easy to spot as well would be the robin. And our, our robin is the one that you see on all the Christmas cards and things like that. He's got a beautiful red chest and a brown back. So he's another really good one to look out for. He might come along to your feeder. They don't tend to um, go on feeders quite so much. They tend to collect all of the bits that other birds have dropped. Um, so have a look out for him. OK, so like I say, you can download the sheet and then complete it online. So you can tell the RSPB which birds are really successful in your garden. OK, but we want to kind of encourage them so we can see which ones visit our garden and how many there are. So we're going to make some bird feeders 
And we do this a lot in the woods because we like to look after our birds that come to the woods. So there's a couple of different ones you might like to try. Um, some that I prepared earlier. This one is one in a tin can. I hope you can see that all right. So for this one, what I did was I collected some seeds and then I melted some lard. So the stuff that we usually use in the wood, which is that white, soft, gloopy stuff. Or if you don't have lard or if you're vegan, vegetarian, you can use the coconut oil for this one. And what you do is you melt it down in a pan so it needs to be hot. And then you add the seed in and mix it together. Push it into your tin can. And then I've put some sticks in because the idea is that this will hang up like this and the birds will be able to come down, land on the feeder and then come and peck and see all the nice seed that's on the inside. And hopefully it should protect it nicely from the weather as well. OK, so I'm going to test that one out and see how that one works. And then along the same idea, I had a tangerine in my fruit bowl that had gone really dry and horrible. So I cut the top off that. And I stuck some sticks in, so again, some nice perches for the birds to be able to come along and they'll be able to peck out the seeds in the middle of there like that. So I'm going to hang that one up like that and see how popular that is. So if you've got maybe an orange skin that you're going to take the juice out of or something like that, you can give that one a try. So we'll see how popular that was. And then the usual one that we do in the woods, we've got our pine corn feeder. You can see I've made a start on this one already. And what this one is, is some bird seed mixed together with some nice bits of lard. And again, you want about the same with the uh, other feeders as well. You want about two thirds fat, sorry, one third fat to two thirds of seed. So I'm just making sure because it's nice and soft, not like when we do it in the woods and it's all freezing cold and our hands are icy cold. This is really nice, soft fat. And it means I can get plenty of seeds in there and I'm just pushing those into the cracks and then what will happen is it will set especially when it goes out into that freezing cold weather at the moment and it will hold all those seeds in place you can see okay I have loads of these hanging around all the time but if you don't don't worry because you could do exactly the same but using a stick so I've got a stick here that I've just put a bit of string on like that. And all I'm going to do is take my bit of fat with seeds on it and push it. This is a bit trickier because it wants to stick to your fingers. Push it onto the stick. Like that. So that when the bird comes and lands down on it, you can peck all that nice goodness you've left for it. And don't worry if you haven't got seeds, because birds will eat the other things that you've got in your kitchen. So you might want to put some porridge oats in, as long as they've not been cooked. You could add some raisins or some tarnas, because they really like those. Or you could maybe even add a little tiny bit of cheese, maybe in tiny pieces or grated. Um, they'll really enjoy that. So I hope you have a go at making one of those and entice some birds into your feeders, uh, into your garden. Um, and let us know if you catch anything and I'm going to keep my eye closely on this and see who comes down and eats our food as well. Bye for now.